Hi guys, I'm Johanna. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for the new like 10,000 of you that have joined in the last week. Um, what? Today, I didn't even think I was gonna be making this video. I was researching something else and as always, I found out something new and I was a little bit like, sorry, what? Found out that people used to think for hundreds of years that California was an island. Literally for hundreds of years, people made maps showing California as an island. And it wasn't until like the 1750s that they confirmed that it was in fact not an island. But that's not the whole picture. There's more. Let's go back. Let's just, let's just go, let's just, let's just roll it back to the beginning. So obviously uh, in the 1500s after Christopher, Col Christopher Columbus discovered the new world, from then on the 1500s, it was all about going to find this new world, mapping it out, charting it out and trying to discover treasure, gold. Particularly like the Spanish. The Spanish were really after El Dorado and the golden city and chasing the legends and all of that. So the Spanish started traveling and sailing all around North America and South America and like mapping it out. And these maps were getting relayed back to Europe. And what was crazy, it was that the original maps showed California as an island. And then other maps were showing California as part of the mainland. There was kind of like a fight going on, but the, the whole argument wasn't cleared up for hundreds of years. Okay, that's not that weird. It's a new land. People get confused. People are going off other people's maps and people get mistaken for what's what. But what is crazy is that the maps, the older maps that show California as an island tend to be more precise and more detailed than the maps that show it as a mainland. So let's start at the beginning. Let's start at the beginning. How, who was the first person to say that California was an island? Where did the concept even come from? There was a book that came out. Uh, it was written around 1496, and uh, there were the, the earliest copy that we have of it is around 1510. Okay, I don't know, this is the book here. No, there. <laughs> Say the name in English. It was The Adventures of Esplandian. And it was about this uh, guy who went to an island. Um, I'm gonna go here. So this fictional novel was all about this island of California, which was off the coast, which was inhibited by only black women, like Amazonian powerful women. And they had gold, a lot of gold on this island. And it was about the queen called Calif Califinia, Califinia, Califia. There's a couple of different names there. Anyway, so this is where the kind of the legend and the story came from and the name kind of stuck. So people trying to find this island of California uh, were sailing around and they did. They found the, the bottom end of California, which is like a kind of stick. The mainstream story is that people were obviously confusing what was the very bottom tip of California and just assuming that it went all the way around and kind of mixing legend and lore. I'm gonna show you some of these maps because what's crazy is these maps are like super detailed. So we've got this one which has all the degrees, loads of like these little islands here. Uh, and there's a river which uh, shows a very detailed lake in the middle of mainland North America. There's like so many of these maps. There was, we have over 800 of these maps showing California very detailedly as an island. And what's interesting as you can see here, like I said before, they are very specifically also mapping out the mini, the four kind of mini islands that lie between the California island and the mainland. And also this river and a lake, which shows up on pretty much all of the older island California maps, but it disappears off the map on a lot of the mainland charters. So they couldn't find it when they were charting the mainland maps, but it appears on a lot of the older ones. A bit weird. Okay, so this is the newer map. So this was from around 15, the early 1500s, and this is way less detailed. It does show California correctly as a part of the mainland. Um, again here, like there are hundreds and hundreds of maps. Ooh, this map is cool. I'll tell you why this map is cool. Uh, because if you can see down here at the bottom, it shows Antarctica with animals on, like turkeys and 
beavers and whatever those animals are at the bottom. Weird map. This is a Chinese map. And this Chinese map, so not only does it show Antarctica with animals on it, but it also shows California as an island, which I thought was really weird. Okay, so my first question was, is this possible? At some point in the past, was California an island? Like way, way, way back? Can we totally rule that out? Is that, what have we got that completely rules that out? Um, so I was having a look at like flood map and I was raising the sea level and dropping the sea level and dropping and raising the sea level does not create an island around California at any point. I went back um, 120,000 years. This is what the North American continent looks like. Uh, and again, even back in like 100,000 years ago, it wasn't an island of what these guys are saying. I think this is where I'm gonna need some help from Randall because geology going way over my head here. We probably would need to, I don't know, if anybody has any <laughs> evidence that can like firmly put this to bed that at no point in time was it ever possible that California was an island. There's even old maps that show over a period of time the changing of California Island to the mainland. You can see here like the different stages. They were mapping the different stages of it becoming part of the mainland. So, so we have hundreds of years of arguments over whether or not California was an island or whether or not it was part of the mainland. Uh, in 1747, King Ferdinand VI of Spain actually made like a public declaration to say California is not an island. That's how much everybody was like arguing about this back in the day. People were adamant it was an island and people were adamant it was part of the mainland. Also, some, this, I didn't do this. I'm absolutely reading, I uh, read this off a blog, but I'm gonna show you four little islands that appear in a lot of the maps. So we get here, can you see the four islands that are in between California Island and the mainland? They are correct if you flooded the mountain ridge today, those four peaks of the mountains would be above the level of the water. So if we superimpose the old map on, on today's land, you can see that the ridges of these four islands, they do correlate with the mountain area, which is something really weird. As you can see here, the mountain, the shape of the island that was on the original map, it, it like fits within the mountain range. So that's weird. That's weird that that does that. So we've got, yeah, no, put that in twice. Okay. <laughs> I've got a new setup and I'm like streaming, I'm recording this as a stream. So I've got all my pictures to talk about. Normally I add them in in post. It's a whole new thing. I'm working on it just. <sighs> So what's the theory here? What's the theory? So either everybody was just completely mistaken from the start and it always was just a complete and utter accident. People mixing the lore legend of the, the fantasy novel of the island of California with all the Amazon women and the gold. That was getting mixed up with the early map makers and they just somehow got it massively, massively wrong. And like nobody seemed to be able to confirm or deny it for hundreds of years. So either that happened or is it possible that there is a another reason why there were so many detailed, precise maps that showed California as an island? Is it possible? I wonder. This is what I'm thinking about because we all know about the Perry Reese map. It is a map that was made in the 1500s and it was uh, made in the, let me see, was it Turkey? Middle East, it was in, around that Middle Eastern area. I believe it was Turkey. And the dude that made the Perry Reese map, he said that he made it by collating loads of really super ancient maps. Why this map particularly has got loads of interest is because the map appears to show a very precise land line of Antarctica which shouldn't be possible because we didn't discover Antarctica until like the 1800s, right? So how is a map in the 15th century made from much, much, much older maps that are now lost and destroyed? How can we know where Antarctica was? Here we go, here's the map. So you've got Africa, you've got South America, and then you've got Antarctica, which is correct according to the um, like American military or American Navy or Air Force, someone in America. <laughs> They said that it was correct. They said that the map is correct in terms of the landline of Antarctica. So, hmm. 
Also, there is a island, interestingly, on the Perry Reese map. Up there in the top left, I want to say, there's like a kind of red island in the sea. Wait, this, this one here. That one right there. Should make it bigger. There we go. Um, so the island in the sea that was mapped out on the Perry Reese map, which like isn't there today. However, if you do look um, underground in the Atlantic Ocean around Bermuda, there is something, there is a kind of landmass that is around the same shape. Should we pop both of them on there at the same time? There we go. We're going to line them up. That's a bit weird, isn't it? Also, uh, looking through Randall Carlson's research, um, some of the um, ocean like deep dives that they were doing and they were dredging up all of um, the stone and the sand, they said that they did find prehistoric sand um, out further than the Azores, further um, over towards North America, kind of like around the Bermuda area, weirdly. So that actually lined up this like island on the Perry Reese map it actually does align with some geological research that there was ancient sand at the bottom of the ocean, which means at one point the bottom was at the top. So who knows? Maybe there's sunken islands all over the world. So is it possible that there are ancient maps that used to exist, like the maps that were source material for the Perry Reese map? Were there ancient maps that existed that mapped California as an island because at some point in time California was entirely enclosed by the sea at some point. The Californian fault line, it runs right alongside almost the border of California as a state. So I mean it's a pretty it's a pretty crazy fluctuating place to be in the world if we probably look at it for the last 100,000 millions of years. So, you know, is it a place that could have potentially at some point had some sort of movement that we didn't record because it happened when there was no recordings. If we're running with the idea that there was an ancient civilization before the beginning of what we think, civili when we think civilization started, what if they had mapped out the west coast and they'd found it was an island and so that the ancient maps that were coming out in the 1500s, they were being copied by mariners, by explorers and the cartographers, they were copying ancient, ancient source maps that weren't correct anymore, but they were correct then. I'm not sure if that's possible. I need to do more research. I don't know a lot about geology. So I'm gonna maybe bring this to Randall and uh, any of you guys, I'm also opening this out to you guys out there. What do you think? Can you throw me any evidence for either way? Uh, have I forgotten anything else? Yes. So this is a late place to scene map of California. Um, this is like what it was about 18,000 years ago. And you can see that there is like a lot of water around, but it wasn't an island, according to the science that these guys have done to make this map. Hmm. I don't know. How confident are we that this is correct? Or is this actually correct? I don't know. I've lost my visuals. This doesn't feel as prepared as I wanted it to be. In conclusion, is the island of California purely a massive human mistake and one that went on for hundreds of years and it kind of just shows the idiocy of humans or is somewhere in these ancient source maps is there a small hint of much older previous source maps perhaps from a time where people were traveling all over the world and had already mapped it and is is the over, is this like a kind of weird overlap? Is there a weird echo in these old source maps from older maps? That's what I was thinking. I'm not sure. I'm still thinking about it, but I thought it was really cool. And I wanted to let you guys know because I'd never heard of it. Again, that might just be because I'm British. But yeah, let me know. Let me know what you think. I'm, I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. And yes, welcome, um, welcome. <laughs> I'm tired. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up or a like or a comment. Um, literally commenting on my videos and sharing them and liking them is like a great free way that you can support me and the channel. It means that I get to make more content. Um, I've got loads of stuff coming up. My Atlantis ring has not arrived yet. That was the video that I was going to make before for this one. Um, so when my Atlantis ring does arrive, I'm going to be doing some experiments on that. And then I'm going to be letting you all know about what is the Atlantis ring and what does it do or not do. Thank you, if you are here from Joe Rogan, 
got like a little cheeky shout out from Randall on Joe Rogan, then um, hello and welcome. And why don't we all message Rogan and ask when I can go on and talk to him because that would be cool. Have a great week guys, happy hunting. Oh, I sat on my foot. Oh my goodness, I've s <gasps> my foot. Oh, that's gonna be pins and needles, isn't it? Wake up! Is it the good pins and needles or the bad pins and needles? Is it like the painful one or is it like the funny one where it like tickles? Oh no, it's a good, it's a good one. It's not a super painful one. I'm still recording. <laughs>